on this edition of InCycle. We talk about the switch from the velodrome onto the road with Belgium's Lottie Kebeki. The skills I pick up on track is uh, yeah, mainly just uh, the high speeds. Yeah, get ons as well. I think track is, uh, is very good for a road racer because you get better in the sprint. We take a reflection on Tom Bonin's career from those who know him best. His quick step floors teammates ahead of his final challenge. If he makes it, he will write history, and if he doesn't make it, his career was history anyway. But first, a look at the future of Norwegian cycling with Christopher Halvorsen. For a nation of only 5 million people, Norway's list of cycling titans is long, and in October, thousands of miles away in Qatar, one of its latest champions was crowned. Yeah, it was perfect. We are a really, really strong team. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it was, we was a little bit too early in the start because we tried to get a man in the breakaway, but it was really difficult. So, as I said, we had a really, really strong team and uh, everything <laughs> was perfect. My name is uh, Christopher, I'm 20 years old. Um, I come from Norway. Uh, yeah, I've been riding like 10 years now, I think. And uh, I'm a sprinter. I don't like the climb so much, but yeah. As Christopher Halverson raised his arms in honour of his Under-23 World Championship victory, he confirmed himself as just the latest product of Norway's most important development team. Since 2005, Team Jokka Ikopal have been responsible for feeding Norwegian talent to the peloton and helping the country punch well above its weight on the cycling scene. I was working for the Norwegian Federation and I saw there was some very good uh, young talents. Uh, cycling, cycling was a small sport uh, in, in, in Norway. Uh, and I made a project uh, where, we, uh, where the plan was to gather all the best under 23 riders and to make our, uh, our own team. The project was uh, welcomed very good in the, in the Federation, but of course there was no, uh, there was no money for it. We decided to, to do it private and uh, since then, 2005, uh, we, we have the team. So we are going into our 12th or 13th season. I have just lost count. The names to have worked through their early careers with the team reads as a who's who of Norwegian cycling. It includes Edvard Bossenhagen, Lars Petter Nordhaug and Alexander Kristoff, who's been one of the team's most successful products. At my time, they, uh, we had only two teams in Norway and uh, Joker had a really good program to be in the Norwegian team back then. Now they developed and they do an even better program, but I remember we had a chance to go to a tour of Ireland, tour of Britain, and uh, it was a unique chance for a Norwegian continental rider to get, uh, get uh, these races and man, to be participating on this level. It's a good chance for young, uh, young Norwegian and young athletes to show themselves for the pro teams. And, yeah. They do a good result here, for sure the pro teams you will see it and they think, ah, strong enough for the pros and they have a big chance to sign a pro contract. We can always show back on what the big guys have done, Christoph, uh, Boas and Hagen. So when they was on your race, they was doing that race, that race. I think the main thing with the team, the philosophy, the thought uh, has been that, that our goal is to prepare young Norwegian riders to, to become a pro rider, but not only to sign the contract, but to become a good pro rider. So give them the two, three years with us to, to learn them all aspects of, of cycling. I think it's 12 pros in, in Norway for the moment. I think uh, nine or 10 of them have been through our system. And Halvorsen looks almost certain to be the next to make that jump and to follow in Christoph's footsteps. Thanks to another of Joka's former riders, Halvorsen's getting a taste of the next level. Now a DS at Team Sky, Gabriel Rash invited the young sprinter to Team Sky's training camp in December, ahead of an expected jump to the World Tour in 2018. He didn't want to turn professional uh, this year. He wants to stay one more year in Joker and uh, develop. So it was a good chance for him to see how things are in this team and also for us to get him to know how he is a, a, as a person and if he fits in the team and um, I think it's a really good chance for uh, it makes it easier for him as well if he signs here in the future it makes the jump uh, a bit smaller. <laughs> it was like when I come to the hotel and uh, meet like Christopher Froome and it was I was a little bit starstruck so yeah I learned uh, very much like uh, 
how they train and uh, hopefully I will <laughs> sign uh, with a, a World Tour team next year. But yeah, it, the most important is to have a good season and, uh, and uh, train good and, and do the, the important work. And that work has already come to fruition with victory in the recent Anzame Classic, confirming Hal Vorsen's class. With Team Joko Ikopal providing the springboard for his clear potential, excitement's building within Norwegian cycling for one of its newest champions. He's uh, still young, so uh, for sure he have a great career in front of him. Uh, I remember me back in his age, I was not even close to fight with the pros, so uh, I think he's a very bigger talent than me. And, uh, yeah, you just need to keep on working and for sure he's good enough to r ride in the pro team already. So now we just have to develop, get uh, some good results, get confidence and, uh, and then uh, for sure next year I, I think he will be in the pro team. The smooth speed of the track the harsh unpredictability of the cobbles. Few manage to conquer one, even fewer conquer both. For me, it's not very difficult to be very good at cobbles and <laughs> very good at track. I like both. I'm Lotte Kopecki, I'm 21 years old and I'm a professional cyclist for uh, Lotte Sudal. I combine track and uh, road racing. Maybe some, some people think I'm dangerous in the peloton, but I think that's because I ride on a track. You have to go through every little gap there is, and yeah, that's a skill that helps me on the road as well to position uh, for the sprint. On the track, you also have to, to work with your elbows because it's sometimes very dangerous. It's a small peloton, but it's uh, only uh, like three meters uh, wide, so uh, everything is very close to, to each other, sometimes closer as on the road, but I like that. I was second in, uh, in Glasgow in the, in the Omnium, in the World Cup. Yeah, that was a very good feeling. And then we, we went to Cali and I won the World Cup in Cali. That was even, yeah, that was really great. Uh, didn't expect I could do this already. If you see that every year you, you get better and you can win a World Cup, that's, yeah, a very big motivation to, to keep uh, doing what you're doing. The skills I pick up on track is, uh, yeah, mainly just uh, the high speed. Yeah, get ends as well. I think track is, uh, is very good for a road racer because you get better in the sprint. On track you, you die like seven times on, on a training and um, yeah, you have to do it in road races as well. I'm a classic rider and it used to be uh, one or two riders that were very good and now there are more riders on the, on the top and bigger teams, better teams. Um, everything is more controlled. And uh, yeah, that's a good thing for, for women's cycling. Yeah, I was very disappointed after Drenthe because I was in the inferred group and uh, I was in the back, but I, uh, yeah, I was too much in the wind. So I tried to, to move up uh, a few places and I took the inside of the corner and it was full of gravel and I crashed myself out of the leading group. I was so disappointed after the race because I felt that well, I felt very good and something more was possible. The only Belgian to finish ahead of her was Jolien Dorda, her teammate and fellow champion Madison partner on track, but a rival on the road. Jolien and I, we, yeah, we know each other, we, we know each other's weaknesses, we, we know each other's strong, strong points, but yeah, I think we um, <clears throat> we like each other enough to yeah play it fair in, in road races and uh, come to the track and be be very good friends and teammates. The two compatriots went head to head again at the most Belgian of races, the Ronde van Vlaanderen, which again became a sprinter's game. At this moment, I enjoy being just in the front and I can, can race my race as I want it. And that's a rider from Lotto Sudal there. That's a number 161, Lotto Kapeki. She's been the rider who stepped up so much this season. You would not expect a trackie to be up there on the cobbles, would you? Yeah, I think the fact that there are more bunch sprints now, it's because the teams are bigger and better. They control the race more. If there's one very strong rider, 
she not always stays uh, in the front. And uh, I think for me that's uh, at this moment uh, an advantage because uh, the others have to, to do the big work of the hard work and I can, uh, can stay on the wheels and uh, try to go to the finish line as, as fresh as possible. There's two very, very fast sprinters in this group in Kopecky and Rivera. Wouldn't that be amazing if Kopecky could uh, win the Tour of Flanders? We started dreaming about winning Flanders, but I'm combining track and road at this moment and I can become fifth. So I think if I get a little stronger uh, the next years, I will be able to maybe win it. The season, my goal was to of Flanders and the World Championships. Um, now we, we just had uh, Flanders and I became fifth. Um, yeah, I didn't expect it in the beginning. It's a great feeling to be fifth in the Tour of Flanders and I'm very confident now because I had such a good result and in three days we leave for the Worlds in Hong Kong and that's a great feeling. I've won more than anybody else in this kind of races. If you look at the figures, the victories I've had, I'm really there with the big guys. From the cobbled races alone, I've, I've won more races than Eddie Merckx. I've had a lot of joy and a lot of good luck, and I've had sometimes some bad luck. And you've always had a strong team, and if you have a strong team supporting you, of course you win a lot of races. So I've been a little bit a child of the success of the team. <laughs> Tom is very special. Tom is my example. He's always been my idol. Tom is a Cobus legend. Tom is the best classic rider of his generation. Tom is a man of class. Tom is fun to hang out with and great to race with him. Tom has hair. <laughs> <laughs> He can laugh, joke, fool around, but he's also very, very serious, so he has a bit of everything, um, which makes him special. He can be very, very professional in training, in racing, but uh, after the race he can have fun on the bus, uh, drink a beer, have fun with the teammates, with the, with the staff. I'm actually from Hardelbeek and uh, his first win in Hardelbeek, I think I was 15 years old and uh, Tom was in that time an example for the uh, young riders and for me it was really special. We took a picture together and uh, that is nice if you can uh, start your career in the same team. Before I was a pro, Tom Bonner was for me an idol, really a champion. I always looked up to him. My favorite Tom Bonner victory is the win of Tour of Flanders in his rainbow jersey. Now that I know Tom, he's more calm and uh, relaxed than I thought he would be. He's really uh, mental, very strong. Probably one of my best memories when he won Roubaix in 2012. And he made a move that he was probably one of the best action in cycling history, winning Roubaix with a 60 kilometer solo attack. And last year, Paris Roubaix, when he came into the bus and he was taking off his shoes, and I expected him to be really very angry uh, because he just lost the race by a few centimeters. And he just said, okay, I just go on. I, uh, I, go, I do one year more and I want to win this race again. And that, that was really impressive.
in the Schelde place. I think uh, nobody has uh, ever got the opportunity to say goodbye like, uh, like he did. Uh, not even Melks or, or uh, the legends uh, back in the days. I don't know if he's enjoying it or inside him is he sad or yeah I told him uh, how, how can you be so so quiet like like I will be emotional every time on the podium when uh, all Antwerp is clapping in their hands to, to welcome you on the podium. Yeah it was really incredible it, uh, it gave me goosebumps actually when uh, when all the people uh, started cheering uh, merci Tom. Uh, and also because uh, I was a lot of time in front, so uh, it was really in a, a wall of noise. Here goes Kittle on the front, but can anybody live with him? Behind the back, trying to come through the wheel in the black. You can see it there, uh, Viviani. Buani is there as well. Viviani trying to come round Buani, but it's Kittle at a canter. Nobody can touch him. Super teamwork to keep him out of trouble at the end. Thought by Bowden, hard work by Stibar. And to put it home and take the win, it was Marcel Kittel for a fifth time. This evening, this, this, this one will be five. <laughs> it's the wrong number. It's the wrong number. <laughs> Yeah, it's my first Paris Roubaix as professional, and you know, this is last race. I can, you know, I'm I'm here in the team, and uh, I think a lot of guys uh, will be jealous to to this, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm really uh, I feel honored to be there. One of my first milestones uh, in my career to be able to say uh, maybe to my grandchildren I uh, rode with Tom Bono in his last uh, Paris Roubaix and maybe uh, the best classic team in the world. How are you feeling, Tim? Yeah, fine, fine, fine. A little bit nervous, but fine. We go all in for it, and if he makes it, he will write history, and if he doesn't make it, his career was history anyway. That was pretty hard to win at one time. So uh, it's incredible. He won the race in this modern cycling four times. How's it going, Elio? Uh, good. A little bit nervous. Kick ass. This being his last campaign, his, his going to his last Roubaix, his last race has been very, very emotional for me. From the start of the season, uh, the preparation was very intense. I think we're all on a very, very high level to go to, uh, to his last group, and that's also going to be very special. I hope it motivates him. Paris-Roubaix is 200 kilometers of importance, actually. <laughs> you can never lose your focus, because uh, if you see last year in a stupid cobble section where normally nothing happened, uh, and the, the coal just exploded because of a crash. because otherwise you're gonna be maybe in some trouble, some stupid situation that just freak up your race.
Uh, I think we're all going to miss Tom as a leader of the team. I'm going to miss him as a friend, but I think we can still learn from him. Like, uh, like I've learned a lot from him through the years. And uh, yeah, I'm going to miss him as a, as a leader, as a champion, as a, an idol, as a, an example. So, but uh, I hope he's going to miss us too. That's all for this week. Join us next time on InCycle. But until then, keep up to date with us across social media.